Hi there, Turgeon here, bringing you physics from afar. We have a system tension problem. And yes, I'm going to show you the solution, but let's remember that the point in all of this is really about the facets of physics. Physics is not a coin with two sides. It's got many facets. In this particular case, I'd say the theme is that you are deciding what your system is. You are deciding when you solve many physics problems, where are you going to focus? What are you going to look at? So uh, please ignore this solution down below and just focus on our problem. And our, our problem is a frictional surface, but on either side, you can see that we have these two masses dangling. Now, what I really want to say is that there's, I guess there's two S's involved here in terms of the overall strategy. The strategy of the two S's. First S is you need to take a system approach. You want to see the overall system so that you can figure out what's happening. And in this language of dynamics, the figuring out what's overall what's happening means what's the acceleration. And then we want to, you want to focus on a uh, specific object. But there was another S word that I had in mind. Oh yeah, single object. You could say specific, I guess. And in that case, you're thinking, what are the forces that are creating the same? We know the acceleration is going to be the same everywhere. So what are the forces that are creating that one single acceleration for the whole object? So here's my uh, system approach to start with. And as I look at the object as a system, remember, the internal forces of the tension, I need to ignore them for a second. I need to think about what's affecting the whole system as a whole, pretend they're all glued together. And I can see that I've got several different forces going on. I've got this force that's driving everything, which I'll call capital MG, and that's driving by the large six kilogram mass. Um, you could argue that there's a normal force and a weight acting on the system they do cancel out but that normal force becomes relevant because i also have a frictional force going this way that is acting on the whole system and i also have another weight that i'll call lowercase mg so i have friction lowercase mg i'm just gonna verbally tell you all these that friction ends up being well i'll write out really quick you're going to use mu force normal. Now it is mu times mg, but you just got to be careful which mass you're using because look, it's only the three kilogram mass. So it's 0 0.3 times three times 10. So that's a nine Newton frictional force. So the frictional force is acting there and it's only nine Newtons. Now this weight force is 20 Newtons. So the net force is 60 minus 20 minus nine, 31 Newtons divided by the mass. 2.82 is my acceleration. That's not my final. Well, usually I do ask you for the acceleration in the system. I should have put that as a um, as the, the question if it were written in words. So I got the acceleration. I know what the behavior of the overall system is. Now I want to focus on one object. You got to pick a, a single object. So you need to put the blinders on. You need to pretend that you can't see anything else except that one. Okay. In fact, cover up all that. This is the same note card that I made a note to myself that I needed to do this. So cover everything up. Is, oh, we just have an elevator problem, and I know the acceleration of that thing. So I have tension one going up, and I have lowercase mg going down. Those are my two forces. And when I plug in, I can see that, oh, this is kind of an interesting thing. I want to just go back and point out, this is still all about the net force. It's all about the net force. In this case, you want to look at it as accelerations and net force over mass. In this case, it's probably easier to look at as net force equals MA, but it's still all about the net force. And I'm looking at that single object of the two kilogram mass and the net force is that minus that. So I can write down, I can write that in equation form. I know the acceleration, I know the mass. Um, it's gonna be two kilograms. G is 10 mass, two kilograms. 
solving for FT1, I get 25.6 as my first tension. And again, I focused in on a single object. So now I'm going to focus on a different single object, that being the 6 kilogram mass. If I look at the 6 kilogram mass, I can see that my force is, I have this tension 2 going up. And I have the very large capital MG going down. So again, it's all about the net force. The net force is MA. In this case, you, that's 6 kilograms. Now, I prefer to make the acceleration going in the direction of my bigger force. In this case, it's downward. And I still know that's 2.82. So that mass is 6. That tension's unknown. That mass is 6. That A is 2.82. So if you do a little algebra, you add FT to both sides, you subtract MA. So MG minus MA, 6 times 10 minus 6 times 2.28 is FT2, which is 43.1. Now, that checks out because I did the math. First of all, it's greater than the 25.6, which I expect because if you go back to this, this mass, I expect this tension to be greater if it's accelerating in this direction. I also did the math for each one. I get the same acceleration if I look at the two forces on this. I get 2.82. If I looked at the three forces on this, you have tension, tension, and the friction going this way. I get 2.82. And if you look at the two forces on this, I get the acceleration of 2.82. So in this physics from afar, the facet is all about how you, as the problem solver, select the focus. You select the system of interest, and in some cases, you really have to put the blinders on.